What's up guys, the amateur here back, escape your cubicle. Uh, we're in downtown Vegas right now on um, Main Street, a little ways away from uh, Fremont Street Experience in downtown Vegas. We're at a place called Antique Mall, Antique Alley, also a place called Sin City Pickers over here on Main Street. And we're gonna check it out. This is uh, supposed to be where the uh, estate sale is that I found online, starts today at 8 a.m. It's 7.35 a.m. right now. It says it's going to be in the alley behind this place. So probably in about uh, a little bit here, I'll get out, take a walk back there, see what's going on behind there, and see if there's any interesting finds we can uh, pick up to resell, see what's going on. All right, so just packing up. I was in there for probably about 30 or 40 minutes, probably 45 minutes in there walking around. A lot of cool stuff, a uh, decent amount of stuff. And uh, yeah, I bought, ended up buying some items. Um, gotta keep my eyes open here. I don't drive around downtown all that much, uh, so I can't let myself be on autopilot too much driving here while I'm talking to you guys. I gotta pay attention actually. <laughs> Um, but anyway, yeah, it was pretty good. There was, um, there was some pretty good stuff in there. Nice guy. Um, what I look for is like a good, when I'm buying stuff for resale, I'm looking for, um, my main two things I'm looking for are first one is brand new items. So anything that looks like it's brand new in the box that has not been opened or used, um, those are good because obviously they're easy to resale. They look brand new. The packaging is brand new. Uh, you can be more confident that the items will work, whatever they are, uh, if they're electronics. So I got a few items there. He had a decent amount of brand new items. Uh, popular gadget type stuff, you know, stuff that you see on infomercials. So people are aware of what the brands are and what the product is. So those are pretty easy to sell. Um, so I got a couple items like that. Um, once I'm back at Mission Control with my stuff, I'll, I'll shoot some video of each item. I'll let you guys know what we paid, as well as I'll let you guys know uh, what the items have a final selling price for and how much we made on them. So uh, it was pretty fun, it's pretty cool. I could definitely see myself getting back into this type of stuff, getting addicted to uh, going to these sales. Um, they're fun to go to and uh, you get great deals. The items are cheap, you know, you get much, better prices on items at these types of estate sales because the sellers are motivated they have everything you know in one big lot they need to clear everything out and uh, they'll negotiate with you unlike if you go into the retail stores and you look at the clearance section the prices are marked they're fixed 
the prices are what they are. You can't really, at least I've never tried, but I don't think you can really go into Target and start negotiating with someone with the price. Hey, how about this for this item? You know, you can't do that. Whereas at these sales, like I said, the sellers are motivated. They will, uh, they will negotiate, give you deals. I spent a total of thirty-five dollars. Uh, my goal is to hopefully turn that into as close to a hundred dollars as we can, or better, of course. So we'll see what we do with those, with all the items I bought. Um, so that was the, the so the, like I was saying, the one item, the one category I look for are brand new unopened items. Second category would be um, like older electronics. The older, the better, and if they're working, the better. So I got a couple of those items as well at this at this uh, sale here. So that's pretty cool because of the fact that you can't find them in stores. You can't even find them in clearance sections of stores if they're old enough, um, and especially if they're new and if they're working. Um, there's still buyers out there that want those items, and so demand is higher. There's less competition because those, those items just are not in existence as much, so you can get more money for them. You can, you know, a lot of times you can get a lot more than what the items originally sold for brand new. So, um, yeah, so we got a couple of those items as well. They're, and they're kind of cool to play with sometimes. Some of them are, I got this, uh, I got this really old Sears store. You remember Sears? Uh, I got this Sears store, uh, audio cassette recorder and I plugged it in and, and it works. It wasn't in great shape. It wasn't in the sound wasn't great, but what do you expect? I mean, the thing is is old. I don't know how old it is. I'll have to do some research. It looks like it's maybe like from the 70s or 80s. Um, but And I have some uh, blank cassettes. So I have some cassettes that we can actually put in and, and test it out completely. Make sure all the functions work, like the record function, the play function. The play function, I did find a tape there that he let me put in and play it. And so, yeah, we got some sound out of it. Um, so it is working. So that thing should be pretty cool too. That should go for uh, a pretty good amount. So yeah, I'll go into more detail um, when I get back and I can include it in this video here. So just uh, stay tuned and we'll uh, we'll probably do that next. But right now I'm gonna go drop this stuff off back at Mission Control and then I'm gonna head back out and do some Ubers, make some money. I haven't done any Ubers yet today. I'm just still uh, struggling to wake up early. And... Um, I wanted to wake up and do a couple of super early Uber trips this morning before I went to this sale, but since I woke up late, I just wanted to get to the sale and, and not mess around with Uber because if you get to these sales late, if you're not one of the first ones in there, um, some of the good stuff can uh, already be gone. You know, by the time you get there, you want to be early. You want to get to these sales right when they start, if possible. Still a lot of good stuff in there, but I'm just not experienced enough to know exactly what I'm looking for. Like, there was a lot of antique type stuff at the sale as well. A lot of nice looking antique dishes. There was actually some dolls. But I think the dolls were more on a little bit the cheaper side. They they weren't really ones that would be worth a lot of money as far as I can tell by looking at them. They weren't really old like porcelain type dolls or any super collectible antique type dolls. But I think I did okay. Um, we'll see. It's just a starting point. We're going we're gonna to get this thing going and and tried to do more reselling, more eBay, and uh, that type of stuff to uh, supplement the uh, Uber income. So, all right, I'm gonna go drop this stuff off, do some Ubers. Um, you guys can stick around here in the video and uh, go along with me. We'll do some Ubers, and then we'll we'll get to selling some of this stuff. All right, guys, here we go. Here is the haul from today's. Uh, what do you call it? From the uh, estate sale. So you got this uh, Sears vintage old school tape recorder. I saw these things going from anywhere from like 20 to $35 or more. Um, <laughs> speaker grill is of simulated wood grain finish. Anyway, this thing does power up. I powered it up. I actually played it a cassette. It played okay. Um, so this is all the stuff I picked up. I picked up all of the stuff you're going to see here for a total of $35. We've got um, five of these brand new unopened recordable cassettes for the recorder. So I think I'll do those separately though. Um, <laughs> you got uh, any Wayne Newton fans out there? You got um, the Magic of Wayne Newton cassette. Uh, Henry Mancini. 
Let's see, we got the cats in here trying to see what's going on. Uh, we got a brand new, the incredible cordless motorized knife sharpener. Swifty Sharp Precision, I don't know. Uh, I think this was going for maybe around 20 bucks. I'm going off of memory. I'm not looking at these right now, but um, so when you're in there, when you're looking, if you're at one of these estate sales or garage sales and you have stuff that's brand new with the barcode, you, um, on eBay or Amazon seller app, uh, like I just had my eBay app open and I would just pick this up and barcode scan it and it showed me all the results of this product. And then I clicked the filter and just set it to close uh, auctions so I could see what they are closing for. You know, how many of them are are going unsold, how many of them are selling, what they're selling for. Um, so that is what you want to do when you're making your buying decisions. We got this 27-piece um, tool tote, wearable tote bag. It's kind of cool. It comes with all these tools as well. I guess those are little screwdrivers, um, needle nose pliers, I don't know, some different things. It says uh, suggested retail, 25 bucks. But yeah, this is pretty cool. It's tempting to keep some of this stuff. That's the thing, you go to these sales, you end up seeing stuff that you're like, hey, this is cool, I need this, I want this. And then you end up getting it for yourself instead of using it for inventory. Um, all right, next we've got a Jensen AM FM stereo cassette player. Definitely old school. <laughs> Look at this guy. So um, with earbuds. So that should be pretty cool. I think that also, a lot of this stuff I, I looked up was going for like around 20 bucks. But again, I just barcode scanned it, see what was uh, said it was selling for, and um, decide if it's a good buy or not. This is what's cool with these selling apps. You could just make these on the fly decisions. In the old days, you had to go in and say, well, this looks pretty good. I could probably sell this for X, Y, and Z. But now, especially if it's something with a barcode, you could just barcode scan it with the app and instantly know basically what your return is going to be and whether or not you should buy it. So also picked up another one similar to that. This is a same thing. It's a Kobe. Um, and they, these are brand new. They're unopened. You know, they're still in their shrink wrapped, whatever stuff. Um, cassette player, AM FM cassette player. Here we go. Same thing. I'm thinking I should be able to get at least 20 bucks for this. Probably 20 bucks. Super slim size. There you go. The packaging is not as nice. You can tell the packaging is sort of turned gold, kind of faded out or whatever. I don't know when this thing was made. Probably in the 90s. Still pretty old. But, um... Let's see if you can see the date on here. I can't see. No. And then we got the hose that grows up to 50 feet. Yes, it is Durarib 2 pocket hose. What's this? Free removable spray nozzle. So we got this one of these big infomercial type, uh, you've seen these things, hoses that store easy. Um, brand new, again, that thing's unopened. It's brand new. We have a Brentwood single cup coffee maker. Another item, which uh tempting for me to keep myself. So like I said, I was thinking about getting um, a small coffee maker that I could put right next to my bed so that uh, maybe it'll help me get my butt up moving in the morning. Also brand new. I opened it up. Everything's still uh, brand new in there, bagged and everything. So that's it. There is the entire lot of goods. And we got all this out the door for 35 bucks, not the cat included. So definitely should have no problem making my money back and then so I'm just a matter of seeing how much I can get for some of these old things. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you guys are doing anything, if you're doing any uh, estate sales or doing any kind of picking, retail arbitrage, selling things on eBay or Amazon. Um, it's a fun thing, but it's also something that you can make some money with. And, you know, some people actually do this full time for a living. They they just uh, they're just buying and selling. So it's definitely something I'm going to try to pick up on. 
and uh, keep you guys up to date and let you know how it goes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.